We have the latest from Westminster as George Osborne announces his autumn spending review. Okay. In sport, Basingstoke boss Bristow steps aside after fifth straight league defeat. I care about the club deeply and you know I found it very difficult to walk away from here on a Saturday evening and distance myself from, from the disappointment. And stay tuned for our festive fashion fix. Hello and welcome to Winchester News Online, I'm Amy Best. Earlier today, the government set out its financial plans for the next five years. Tax credit cuts are to be scrapped, and in light of the recent attacks in Paris, spending on defence is set to go up. Before the Chancellor, George Osborne's announcement, our reporters were gauging the political temperature outside College Green in London. With a month to go until Christmas, we'll be finding out if George Osborne will be handing out any Christmas presents. On the one hand, we're hearing that more money will be made available for affordable housing. But at the same time, benefits such as housing benefit could be cut. They should be looking after the elderly and the homeless for definite, instead of spending it on themselves and everywhere else. They overlook people like us. George, you want to do a better job before we sack you. In the newsroom, Rodri Cannon has been looking into the main details of the autumn statement and what has unfolded in Parliament. Thanks, Amy. George Osborne took many by surprise earlier today when he announced he was going to scrap his plans to cut tax credits. In wake of the recent terror attacks, such as in Paris, the Chancellor said there will be an increase in defence spending and also said the police will escape tax cuts, saying the police protect us and we're going to protect the police. This spending review delivers on the commitment we made to the British people that we would put security first. But it wasn't all good news. Climate change, energy and transport were all victims of deep cuts in the budget while Osborne is expected to push ahead with £12 billion worth of welfare cuts. These are the headlines, but as is so often with these announcements, the devil is in the detail, and it will be a few weeks until the impact of Osborne's decisions are recognised. Back to the studio. Cancer causes more than one in four deaths in the UK, according to the charity Cancer Research UK, although 50% of people will now survive the disease for 10 or more years. Now, there is a campaign fundraising for a new research centre in Southampton, which can help develop cancer treatments. Mark Betts has more. Cancer researchers at the University of Southampton are campaigning to raise £25 million to open an exclusive, state-of-the-art research centre in Southampton General Hospital. Leading scientists and researchers will use the centre to further investigate treatments for cancer. This will speed up the process by moving patients and specialists into the same building, allowing research and care to happen simultaneously. We're not just a new building, we're not just putting some extra people in, we're actually bringing together lots of different groups so that hopefully we can go from understanding how things work right through to patients. And we're in a very unique position here in Southampton is that the University of Southampton building is on the hospital site, which allows us to go from what we call discovery science, understanding how things work, straight into the clinic to actually treat the patients rather than have it sit on the bench waiting for something to happen. The centre looks to continue Southampton's ongoing research into the cure for cancer, using patients' immune systems rather than more aggressive treatments such as chemotherapy. What we're trying to do is we're trying to utilise natural things from your own body to identify those cells that are cancerous and be able to attack those cells and just, just kill those cancer cells and not, be, not kill the other cells in your body. We're trying to engage with the public to help the public understand what we're actually trying to achieve with the, with the new building and with the campaign. If we're all in the same place aiming towards one goal, it's going to be a lot easier than if we're all dotted around. Fundraising is through the campaign's website and events such as lab tours. With over half of the 25 million already raised, the centre is set to open in 2017, with construction starting next year. Mark Betts. Winchester News Online, Southampton. Today is White Ribbon Day, when the issue of domestic violence is highlighted. Earlier, Winchester City Council held an event to raise awareness of this growing problem. Our crime reporter, Tiao Yi Shen, has more. White Ribbon Campaign is a national movement to end male violence against women and girls. It is a crime that has increased in the area. 
Today, in Winchester city centre, the mayor attended an event where she voiced her concerns that not enough people are aware of just how much it happens. It affects everybody. It doesn't matter if you're rich, poor, if you, wherever you live, it's going on all the time and I don't think people realise it's out there, it's going on and we really have to understand that. The mayor had one key message. Be vigilant. Keep an ear and an eye open and please help those poor people that it is affecting. The mayor, councillors and the police hope events like this will raise awareness to put a stop to domestic violence. Deo Yixin, Winchester News Online. Thousands of people suffer domestic abuse every year. Now the government is tightening the law in order to support victims. Under a new offence, Police officers can take legal action against a suspected offender without any help from the victim. Our crime reporter, Brooke Perriam, has this report. We should warn you that it does include some distressing images. Nothing else finished with that. No, I'm sorry. I thought you were asleep. Yeah, well, you thought wrong. It's a crime that has been described as life-shattering for victims and one the government hopes to stamp out as they plan a new law to help people who are too scared to come forward to the police. Sarah, not her real name, claims she was in an abusive relationship years ago. She says she is still too afraid to report what happened to her. He was my boyfriend and he hurt me. The worst time was a blow to the back of the head. I was terrified. It was a very dark time in my life. More than 1.4 million women have suffered domestic abuse in the last year, as well as 700,000 men. And in Hampshire alone, over 60,000 people came forward to the police to report the crime. The figures suggest that more people are coming forward to the police, but it's the steps after, when a victim may have to face their offender in court, that can be the hardest. This new law means that in some cases, victims will no longer be required to do that, and officers can put themselves in the witness box on their behalf. Wiltshire Constabulary is just one of the forces preparing for the new offence. One officer thinks it will have a dramatic impact on victims. The control has been taken from them for so long by the perpetrator that by the time we get them to court, they've kind of moved on, they don't want anything to do with it anymore. It, we're then trying to make them drag up all over again. So I'm really positive about this offence coming out and I think it should have a really dramatic impact. Please. I said no! Besides, the new offence is expected to come in within nice. the next few months, which the authorities hope will encourage more people to come forward. Brooke Perriam, Winchester News Online. Recent research has found links between healthy breakfasts and children's school achievements. Letty Buxton looks into why experts think that children shouldn't skip breakfast. Research published this month has found a link between children's performance at school and what they have had for breakfast. I spoke to community manager Alison Murray, who says it makes a huge difference. Uh, they always have uh, fruit, so bananas, apples, pears, oranges every day, uh, toast with butter, jam, and there's always different choice of cereal. In my personal opinion, I would say that, yes, it, you know, they do achieve higher grades um, and they do well in their school day, their behaviour is better and they can concentrate more. I think that would be really good uh, across the whole country, in my personal opinion, to have a, you know, a free breakfast for all children. The results were measured by comparing SATS test results. Fitness professional Lizzie Havers told me about the nutritional importance of breakfast. Breakfast is the most important meal of the day because overnight our body has been fasting. And that means that our body's been using sugar to carry out its repair tasks and, and mend itself overnight. I think that the best thing would be to make sure that those breakfast clubs are containing the right foods. Again, make sure they're from wholemeal sources, fresh fruits, fresh vegetables and not too high in sugar. The research concluded a positive correlation between educational attainment and breakfast consumption. Letty Buxton, Winchester News Online. Bus routes are under threat in Southampton as the City Council opens consultation on next year's budget. The Council proposes to remove the subsidy on the X12, X14 and W1 routes, which would result in the closure of the Shirley service. The plans come amid wider consultations on the 2016 budget, which aims to close a £12 million budget gap. The consultation will close on the 14th of January. 
with around 350,000 people expected to descend on Winchester for the annual Christmas market, the City Council has warned that parking will be a problem. In March, 351 spaces were lost when the Friars Gate car park in the city centre was closed. Visitors of the Christmas market have complained about this. Winchester Cathedral has said it is working with the City Council to improve parking by encouraging people to come to the market by coach. And marine archaeologists have been diving into the Solent to document forgotten shipwrecks from World War I. They've created 3D maps of the wrecks off the south coast, allowing the public to explore the vessels from the comfort of their own home. Stay tuned for the full story of the forgotten shipwrecks with Stephen Slominski. With only one working landfill site in Hampshire and a dramatic increase in the amount of rubbish within the last two years, what is next for waste disposal in Hampshire? Our environment correspondent, Nadija Parker, investigates. This is one of 26 recycling centres across Hampshire. County officials say they want more residents to use these facilities in an effort to stop waste being sent to landfill. But what we want to try and do is drive down the volumes of waste and then of course the proportion of recycling will move up. And if we can find new markets for materials and new materials that we can recycle, then that can all help. And we want to bring to zero any diversion to landfill. In 2013, over 57,000 tonnes of waste were sent to landfill. And last year, these figures increased, with 61,000 tonnes of waste being sent to the site. But local charity Winac says that more needs to be done. You know, I think people have become complacent about recycling, um, and so we are seeing recycling rates plateauing or dropping. Um, there's a lot of confusion about what can go in the recycling bin and what can't. I mean, much more needs to be done. Winchester City Council and Winac have recently launched their Great Waste campaign to show creative ways of recycling and plan to hold further campaigns in the next few months. Nadija Parker, Winchester News Online. Make sure you stick around after this bulletin for more from our Live at Five team. Ryan, what can we expect this week? Well, Amy, you can expect Christmas party fashion, everything that you need to know about Black Friday and the latest Kate Winslet film review. A local clothes shop in the city centre has become an internet sensation this week after a video submitted by the store has reached over one million views. Toby Cruz sizes it up. <laughs> Closing time led to overnight fame for the Winchester branch of suit shop Moss Bros. Filmed after hours, the video was uploaded to the Lad Bible Facebook page and in less than 24 hours, the video has reached over a million views and the newfound fame seems to suit the staff. We just wanted to let off a bit of steam. We were very busy on the Sunday trading and someone said if we had a tape measure, we could roll the uh, Maltesers down and if it goes in your map, it'd be fantastic. So we tried it and it worked. No, I don't think we ever expected it to be any... We didn't even expect it to get on the Lab Bible, to be honest, let alone, let alone get over one million views. A bit dumbfounded that it got as big as it did, but I think we all are, really, but, but yeah, we're pretty happy with it. The team's late-night antics may have got the ball rolling, but whether or not they make a difference to the business is hard to measure. Toby Cruz, Winchester News Online. Now over to Victoria Barclay with Sport. Thanks, Amy. Yes, breaking news from Sport this week as Jason Bristow has stepped down as Basingstoke manager following five straight defeats. Dominic Chandler has the story. This was the scene on Saturday, with Jason Bristow berating his players after their latest defeat. Winnell exclusively interviewed Bristow when he was appointed caretaker manager in 2012. Jason, congratulations on your appointment. Um, what did you... I really want to make this work. Um, I've got Kevin Braybrook with me as, as my assistant. He's, a, he's an excellent coach and I believe that between us, we can, we can push on now towards the end of the season and get the results needed and, and restore faith in the fans. And, and Bristow was optimistic about the task in hand. You know, it, there's always a team that makes a late charge for the playoffs, and why can't it be us this year? And he did just that by the end of the season, as his team pushed on to reach the semi-finals of the playoffs. And he repeated the feat last season, when he led them to their joint highest ever finish in the Conference South Division, finishing in third place. However, the campaign once again ended in semi-final heartbreak at the hands of Whitehawk. This season they grabbed attention with their scintillating FA Cup run, with the high point being a 3-0 giant kin of Torquay United to reach the first round. On paper, Bristow's record is respectable, but after just one league win all season and five consecutive defeats, 
when all caught up with the former manager yesterday to find out why he left his post. I think over the last few weeks, you know, the results have not been good enough. Um, and it's affected me as a person. I think, you know, I've, I care about the, the club deeply. And, you know, I found it very difficult to walk away from me on a Saturday evening and, and distance myself from, from the disappointments. And I've taken that home to my, to my family. And uh, it's been very difficult um, for them as well as me. So I think the decision was made before Saturday. Stay tuned to Winchester News Online for our full report and all the latest on the story. Dominic Chandler, Winchester News Online, Basingstoke. In campus, Winchester Knights range champion over Bristol First with a whopping 100-46 win. Matt Shepherd caught the action. 100 up, Team Winchester soared to an emphatic 146 demolition of Bristol University. The Knights flew out the traps, raced it into a 28-7 lead in the first quarter. The onslaught continued into the second quarter as Simon Lombardi got his name on the score sheet several times to make the score 52-16. Winchester carried on their dominance in the third quarter, getting a further 25 points. The team thumped home their superior advantage by hitting the 100-point mark later on in the final quarter. Up next for Team Winchester is title rival Southampton. I think we went pretty well, obviously scored the most points we've scored the entire season and since I've been at university. Only real competitors probably Southampton first, which they haven't lost the game yet. But yeah, I'm, I'm feeling good. I feel if we beat them, then we can win the league quite, quite comfortably. So can Winchester keep this form up? Matt Shepard, Winchester News Online. In ice hockey, Basin Stoke Bisons battled Milton Keynes Lightning in a tight game, making them new leaders of the league. Matt Wilson was there. After a goalless opening period, it was clear that it was going to be a close match and it was Lightning who struck first early on in the second period. Bison fought back quickly with Joe Greener getting the goal from some distance. Thomas Karpov put Bison in the lead with an unassisted goal. In the third period, Lightning put themselves on level terms, Lee Jamieson taking the game to overtime. Overtime finished goalless with chances at both ends. The penalty started and Thomas Hydlovsky stood firm in the Bison goal. Next was Joe Rand for Bison who found the back of the net past Jordan Marr. Hydlovsky eased the pressure on his team as he saved another penalty. Kieran Long kept his call with the last penalty to win it for Bison and put them top of the league. We lost a tough game in Hall that should, uh, probably shouldn't have happened, but tonight maybe we might not even have been the best team, but we bounced back and found a way to win, which is, is the most important thing. Matt Wilson, Winchester News Online, Basingstoke. And finally on the road to Rio, Winnell's cameras took to the diving boards to track Olympic hopeful Gemma MacArthur's progress. Seventeen-year-old Southampton diver Gemma MacArthur has her sights set on the Olympic Games. She makes the hour and a half long trek to training six days a week and has been doing so for almost half her life. Gemma told me about her road to Rio. I normally get up at around seven, have breakfast, go to college for about two hours and then I train for the rest of the day. I train about 16 and a half hours a week. I'm training for senior nationals and the British Nationals and I hope to someday go to the Olympics. It would mean everything to me, it's my lifelong dream and hopefully I can get there. Gemma's coach Lindsay Fraser told us what it takes to become an Olympic diver. They need to apply themselves uh, in everything they do, so in terms of time management, in terms of being very, very fit, committing themselves to training, eating correctly, sleeping correctly, but most importantly having fun. Well, I've been training hard today in Southampton, but it doesn't look like I'm going to be making the 2016 team anytime soon. Georgie Wingrove, Winchester News Online, Southampton. That's all from Sport This Week. Back to studio. That's all from News. Now over to Ryan McAndrew with Live at Five.
Hello, I'm Ryan McAndrew and welcome to Winnell Live at Five. It's now possible to explore a sunken wreck from the comforts of your own home, thanks to maritime archaeologists and heritage lottery funding. Stephen Slominski took the virtual plunge. Deep under the Solent, divers have been photographing the remains of a First World War naval vessel, which has lain undiscovered for almost a hundred years. The John Mitchell was a converted fishing boat which sank off the Isle of Wight in 1917 and it's one of over a thousand wrecks that litter the south coast seabed. Marine archaeologists, with the aid of heritage lottery funding, are researching forgotten wrecks of World War I and this week have uploaded a 3D model of the John Mitchell so people at home can explore the wreck online without getting their feet wet. Why is it important to uh, document all these wrecks? It's a fantastic opportunity to actually see a shipwreck on the seabed. If we forget this period of history, and if we don't record it in sufficient detail now, while there are still wrecks to actually record, then we may miss the opportunity altogether. Uh, some of these wrecks are now completely falling apart, and the model of the John Mitchell demonstrates that what was once a, a crowd fishing vessel is now reduced mainly to its metal components that survive on the seabed. It's really quite an exciting and quite moving experience. So somewhere out there at sea lie a thousand forgotten wrecks with untold stories still waiting to be uploaded to the website. This is Stephen Slominski for Winchester News Online at Milford on Sea. Oscar winning actress Kate Winslet plays an Australian native in her latest film The Dressmaker. Our film critic Lynn Arimba Williams shares with you her top three Kate Winslet films. At number three is the British-American period drama Sense and Sensibility. Kate Winslet plays naive and emotion-driven Marianne Dashwood in this Jane Austen classic, a 16-year-old who hits suspicious highs and worrying lows in this film. At number two is Divergent. Based on a novel by Veronica Roth, Divergent is an American futuristic film. Kate Winslet plays a very different role here. We see her as a villain and a manipulative force. At number one is The Holiday. The Holiday is a 2006 rom-com about two women, Kate Winslet and Cameron Diaz. Kate Winslet plays Iris Simpkins, a London-based wedding columnist who is unappreciated by her love interest and desires better. I've been working out with Arthur. There is much more from our team this week on the website. You'll find an interesting video on the 100th anniversary of Technicolor Films. And with Christmas just around the corner, Sarah Camford has a sweet treat to give any of your loved ones. You can see those over on winnell.co.uk. The American phenomenon, Black Friday, has made its way across the pond. Shops and online retailers slashed their prices for just one day, creating Christmas shopping mayhem. Natasha Hunt brings you some top bargains that you should get your hands on. People across the UK are expected to spend £1.07 billion pounds this Black Friday. I've rounded up some of the best bargains for you to look out for. In at number five is Starbucks, offering a buy one get one free on their Christmas blend coffee. This is great for any coffee lover and means you get something out of it too, so long as you're prepared to wait in the queue for ages. At number four is Amazon's six inch Kindle with a glare free touchscreen. This has gone down from $59.99 to $49.99 and it's great for reading on the go. Just remember that you have to pay for any extra books, which can get quite costly. In at three is a Virgin Experience Day from Very.co.uk. You can get a pamper day for two at a Valentine's Spa. It was £155 and is now £80, so that's only £40 each, which means you can afford to treat yourself. You just need to make sure that you've got someone to take with you. In at number two is from Amazon, a 400 gigabyte PlayStation 4 bundle that comes with Star Wars Battlefront. This comes in at £279.99 with free delivery. The game itself retails at around £40 and the console at around £300. So this means that you make a saving of around £60. This wouldn't be the best present for me, but it would make an ideal Christmas present for any gamer, as long as they aren't fed up with the Star Wars hype. I think that the best Black Friday bargain is from Park Resorts, who are offering up to 60% off short breaks and up to 70% off of weekend escapes in 2016 in the UK. These trips would be a great thing to look forward to in the new year, as long as you don't mind the unpredictable British weather. These are just five of my best Black Friday bargains, but make sure you tweet us at Winnell to tell us yours. 
With Christmas just around the corner, the party season is in full swing. Holly Broughton shows you how to sparkle and shimmer with her must-have party wear. This sparkling blue dress is perfect for showing off your curves. The scoop back is bound to get heads turning. Combine with a brightly coloured clutch for a desirable look. Pair a glittery crop top with leather look trousers for that evening elegance. Add a beaded clutch bag and burgundy suede wedges to finish. This embellished silver dress is perfect for anyone wanting to stand out from the crowd. Remember, attention to detail is key. For a simple but classy look, opt for a red sequin top and leather look trousers. Finish with a pair of black studded heels to complete the festive look. That is all from Live at Five for this week and until after Christmas. The entire Winnell team will be back in the new year to bring you up to date with everything from food trends to the latest film releases. Goodbye.